This episode is based on chapter Active Models and Records from Layered Design for Ruby on Rails Applications by Vladimir Dementiev. Ruby on Rails is a framework for building web applications and it consists of multiple components. Two important components are Action Pack and Active Record. Action Pack handles the HTTP layer, while Active Record is responsible for the model layer. Action Pack is used for handling HTTP requests and executing background tasks in a web application. It includes components like rack and controllers. Some sub-frameworks in Action Pack have been retired, while new ones are added as Rails evolves. Active Record, on the other hand, is responsible for managing the model layer. It handles persistence and data storage in a database. It is called Active because it is a library related to models, and Record because it deals with database records. In Rails, there is a naming pattern for components. Anything related to user interactions, such as controllers, uses the action prefix. Model-related libraries use the active prefix, probably because of active record being the first of its kind. In the MVC, model view controller pattern, the model manages data and business logic. This means it has multiple responsibilities. In Rails, the model is supported by active record, which can handle all these responsibilities. Overall, Active Record is an important component of Ruby on Rails that handles the model layer and provides persistence and database functionality. The Active Record library in Ruby on Rails is responsible for managing the application's data stored in a relational database. There are two main ways to communicate with a SQL database, writing plain SQL queries or using ORM, Object Relational Mapping. ORM allows developers to use object-oriented language to communicate with the database. Instead of working with raw result data, such as arrays and hashes, ORM returns objects. It also handles low-level database operations like building SQL queries. Active Record is an implementation of the ORM pattern known as Active Record. It not only represents database records, but also encapsulates read and write operations. This makes it easy to work with databases in Ruby on Rails. Here's an example of using Active Record to insert, retrieve, update, and delete data from a database. Active Record makes it easy to work with databases using a single class for each database table. It also improves code readability. However, one drawback is that it violates the separation of concerns principle by combining persistence object and business model object. This can lead to complications when making database schema changes, difficulties in testing without creating real database records, and potential performance issues. There is an alternative pattern called Data Mapper, which separates models from persistence. Objects don't know how to persist themselves and are just plain Ruby classes. This pattern addresses some of the drawbacks of Active Record, but comes with its own challenges, especially when dealing with associations between objects. Ruby Object Mapper, ARAM, is a popular library implementing the Data Mapper pattern. It provides a storage agnostic way to describe objects and mappers, allowing for flexibility in choosing different storage implementations. ROM also uses change sets for write operations, diverging from the classic definition of the Data Mapper pattern. In Rails, Active Record is the default ORM pattern because it offers all in one objects that prioritize productivity and quick prototyping. However, as a product grows, developers will need to address the trade-offs associated with Active Record and potentially explore alternatives like Data Mapper. Active Record models in Ruby on Rails not only represent the database tables, but also define the rules for modifying and maintaining the application state. These rules can be divided into transition rules and consistency rules. Transition rules determine how and when the state can be modified while consistency rules enforce restrictions on the state. In Rails, these rules can be defined using validations within the active record models. Validations are used to check the correctness and integrity of the data before it is saved to the database. For example, a validation can ensure that a post cannot be turned into a draft after it has been published, or that a post can only be created if it has a non-empty title. Here is an example of how validations can be implemented in an active record model. In the above example, the prevent drafting published validation method is called when the post is being saved and its state is changing from published to draft. If the validation fails, an error message is added to the errors object. However, keeping all the validations within the model class can lead to class bloat 
and mixing of responsibilities. To address this, custom validations can be extracted into separate validation objects. These objects perform multiple validations related to each other. For example, all the rules related to the post-publishing process can be combined within a publishing validator object. In the above example, the publishing validator performs various validations related to post-publishing. It is invoked when the post is being saved and its state is changing to published. Rails also provides validation contexts, which allow validations to be applied based on different contexts, such as create or update. This helps in avoiding redundant validations and allows for better control over the validation process. In summary, active record models in Ruby on Rails define transition and consistency rules using validations. Validations help in enforcing data correctness and integrity before saving it to the database. Custom validations can be extracted into separate validation objects. Validation contexts can be used to apply validations based on different scenarios. In a Ruby on Rails application, active record models are not just limited to validations, callbacks, and scopes. They can contain a variety of functionality, ranging from presentation helpers to external API calls. This allows developers to conveniently package different features within a single model class. Some common examples of functionality that can be found in active record models are presentation helpers like user full name, mappers like post to elastic search data, calculators like subscription effective payment for today, notifications like campaign send promo SMS, and external API calls like facility lookup geolocation. Active Record is a comprehensive solution for describing the application state and accessing the underlying data storage. It brings together various concepts like mappers, repositories, validators, event dispatchers, presenters, and more into a single object. This results in conceptual compression and simplifies the development process. It's important to note that some features and APIs, such as validations, are not specific to Active Record alone, but are inherited from Active Model, which is the core framework for Rails models. Active Model was extracted from Active Record in Rails 3.0 to separate the persistence layer from the controllers and views. It serves as both a persistent and non-persistent model in Rails MVC. Active Model provides an interface that many Rails helpers rely on, allowing objects to respond to certain methods without checking their types. To demonstrate the Active Model interface, we can use the example of the link to helper. The link to method relies on methods like persisted, model name, and to param from the Active Model interface. Any Ruby object can be used as a record if it satisfies this interface. Rails provides the Active Model API module to attach the Active Model behavior to any object. This module also includes the Active Model Attributes module, which allows the declaration of model attributes in an active record fashion. If a custom interface implementation is preferred, Active Model compatibility can be enforced by adding a set of conformance tests through the Active Model Lint module. By adhering to the Active Model interface or using its API directly, developers can easily follow Rails conventions and reduce the need for additional configuration. It also allows for the creation of virtual models that can be used in controllers and view templates, simplifying the development process by eliminating the need for extra concepts or boilerplate code. Active Model can also be used as a refactoring tool for the model layer, allowing for an easy transition from virtual models to persistent ones without changing the existing code that uses them. Enhancing objects with active model features, such as the active model API and active model attributes can have performance implications. The CPU time and memory usage are affected when initializing a large number of active model objects during the execution of a unit of work. To compare the performance difference, a benchmark test is conducted using the benchmark IPS gem. Three scenarios are benchmarked, initializing a plain Ruby struct object, initializing an active model object using the active model API, and initializing an active model object with active model attributes. The benchmark test shows that initializing objects with active model features is slower and requires more memory compared to Ruby struct. This additional overhead can slow down the overall execution, especially when dealing with large collections of objects. However, in most cases, the performance overhead of using active model features is negligible as we don't usually create a large number of active model objects simultaneously. 
The concern arises primarily when dealing with large collections of objects, where the transition from active model to struct can greatly reduce request time. Overall, the performance implications of using active model should be considered in specific scenarios, but in general, the slight overhead can be tolerated. Active Record, the largest part of Rails, provides numerous APIs for developers to use in their applications. As a result, models inherited from Active Record often end up carrying multiple responsibilities, leading to what is known as God objects, over responsible Ruby classes. To identify candidates for refactoring in the code base, it is important to consider metrics such as churn and complexity. Churn refers to how often a file has been modified, indicating potential design flaws or attempts to improve the initial implementation. Complexity, on the other hand, measures the complexity of the source code. Using version control systems like Git, churn can be calculated by determining the number of commits that have affected a specific file. Complexity can be measured using tools like Flog, which calculates the code complexity for a given file. By analyzing churn and complexity, we can identify classes that require attention for refactoring. Typically, the intersection of the top 10 lists for churn and complexity is a good starting point for identifying problematic classes. To aid in the analysis of churn and complexity, tools like Attractor can be used. Attractor is a code complexity calculation and visualization tool that provides an interactive web interface for analyzing data. It supports both Ruby and JavaScript, making it a comprehensive solution for Rails web applications. In Rails projects, the most complex class is often one of the core models, such as user, account, or project. Refactoring these god objects involves strategies such as extracting abstraction layers to better organize and distribute responsibilities. That's all in today's episode. In the next episode, we'll explore Ruby on Rails satellite frameworks such as Active Job and Active Storage and learn about their design patterns and techniques. If you found this episode useful, please like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments below. See you soon.